Hey, my name is Jennifer Carey. I'm a sophomore at Pearl River Community College, and I'm in my second year at the Honors Institute. This year for the Honors Symposium, my topic that I chose was music through COVID-19. And for this, I decided to research how band programs in Mississippi have handled the COVID-19 pandemic. So for this, I have interviewed several band directors across the state of Mississippi for statistics on how they handled everything within the pandemic and how it affected their program. So the ways that it affected it included stuff like their student population within the extracurriculars, their games and performances, their music selection and stuff like that. So the inspiration for me choosing this topic was that my major is music education and I'm going to be doing this one day and obviously none of us would have expected that this is where we would be a year ago and you never know where we'll be in the future so it's important that people choose this to research and learn from it so that we can grow in the future. So the schools that I interviewed varied in size from 58 students to 225 students and 83% of the programs that I interviewed were significantly affected by COVID and in most of that their population was decreased. So 50% of the participating programs had students that chose to enroll virtually in the band class itself. Now some of them lost students to virtual schooling, but not every school had an option for virtual classes. But of those that did decide to do assignments for the virtual students in the band program, every single one of them saw positive results. So that is a huge plus. So the biggest issues with scheduling this year is that a lot of schools had to shorten their school day and that affected the band period because you have a lot of things that you have to get done within one period. And so a lot of schools partake in after school activities most of the time, practices and such. But a lot of schools had to either cut that out or drastically shorten it this year. So that's taken a huge toll on a lot of programs. And as far as protocols for the actual rehearsals, most schools are doing specific things for different types of instruments and different groups of people within the band programs. So for example, woodwinds, there's a lot of holes on every instrument. And so a lot of schools have chosen to get woodwind bags to put their instruments into to diffuse the particles within the air coming from them. For instruments such as brass that have one export for the air, they've chosen to do bell covers, which just cover the entire bell of the instrument and stop any particles that could possibly get through. And for those brass instruments, there are also water keys that distribute the spit and condensation from the instruments. So the majority of schools have chosen to find ways to reduce the spread of germs from that. And those ways can include buckets of Clorox and water or a bucket with something to absorb it and things of that nature. So, As far as football games go, every single school that we interviewed was able to do football games this year. However, only 17% of them were able to travel. And of those that did travel, they were only able to go to one or two games because it depended on the game, the visitors that they were visiting. So most of schools had a dramatic change in their selection of music this year because you had to do things such as make it easier considering the difficult school year and the start of the season was pushed back for most people so a lot of people didn't get to have a band camp this summer. So for the actual football games in the stands, there were a difference of protocols and what the students had to do, and as well as the directors. So 50% of the schools that I interviewed had found an alternative to the traditional marching uniform. And that typically included a summer uniform, which is maybe a dry fit t-shirt and some shorts and some tennis shoes, as opposed to the thick uniforms that collect sweat and get together in the closet. So a lot of people have stopped the germs in that way. 
most of the schools have, <laughs> have most of the schools have partaken in social distancing in the stands, and half of the schools have partaken in masks in between the pieces of music in the stands. So for the actual cases of COVID within the band programs and the schools that they are related to, 60, all of the band programs that I interviewed had quarantines within the band. And that didn't necessarily mean positive cases, but it was mostly people who were in contact with the virus. But only 67% of those bands actually had positive cases. So a lot of the protocols that these schools are using are working. And 33% of the programs had school-wide shutdowns for at least two weeks. And what's interesting about that is that most of the schools that had less protocols in place or were less strictly enforced directly correlated with the schools that had school-wide shutdowns. So 67% of the schools that I interviewed implemented specific ways to help raise morale and help the attitudes of the students. And the responsibility that these directors took on was to make sure that their students were as comfortable as possible and had as full of a musical experience as they possibly could. And the directors that made those extra steps also saw the least drops in enrollment and the most compliance that they could possibly get out of the students. So my final questions for the directors that I interviewed was what have you learned from this experience and how will you move forward? And 100% of the band directors that I interviewed said that there is something, anything from this school year that they have implemented that they will take forward into years that have nothing to do with COVID. So for example, a lot of the schools that are doing virtual assignments plan to continue those after COVID is long gone. So in that way, there are a lot of schools that could have benefited from taking the extra steps to be more strict with their protocols. And I think we would have seen a lot more negative results as far as COVID. But most schools in Mississippi are doing a wonderful job of making sure that their students are comfortable and safe and as normal as possible this year.